In today's episode, we are talking about what are your tips for learning music by ear? We asked our community and also me and Hayes got some tips for you. Here we go. Hey there, music makers. I'm Hayes Griffin. I'm Magnus Sedlund. And welcome to the Mandolin Secrets Podcast, a show where we take a deeper look at what's happening in the world of mandolin secrets. Each episode, we'll tackle our question of the week, unpack the latest mandolin secrets lessons, and answer your questions about mandolin and all things music. In this week's episode, we'll be discussing our questions of the week. Do you have any music goals for the new year? What are your tips for learning music by ear? And do you play any other mandolin family instruments? Before we dive into this week's discussion, though, be sure to head to mandolinsecrets.com forward slash podcast to sign up for the reminders about our upcoming shows. Just search Mandolin Secrets Podcast on your favorite podcast platform and subscribe to get updates when we release a new episode. All right. And I also think just today I want to get a little reminder out to people that don't forget your mandolin humidifiers. <sighs> Absolutely. Because you know, uh, right where I'm right now, this is the middle of January. I'm in Sweden and we have 22 degrees Celsius below zero. I mean, that, that would equal like minus 7.4 Fahrenheit today. Can I say so, something, Magnus? Yeah. It was the same temperature here yesterday. Yeah. I, I actually, I was in, in contact <laughs> with a guy in Michigan. He told me the same. It's so, you, like I, you guys can keep that weather over there, man. We don't need that <laughs> stuff here. <laughs> God, it's freezing cold. And, and tomorrow, like yesterday morning, I took my bike up to the studio, and I had to stop the bike ride because, you know, the skin was it was burning from the. <laughs> from the oh. So I well, today I was uh, wise and walked instead. But you know when. <laughs> Yeah, that wind rushing past your face when it's minus 20 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so cold. But, but so um, like torture. Yeah. So a little bit of yeah, <laughs> like humor touched with, of course. But as a friendly reminder, don't forget the humidifiers. Because my, my, my poor instruments is, is, yeah, struggling in this climate right now. Yeah. Water! Give yeah. me water! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. yes. Don't want to ruin those expensive mandolins. The cheapest ones are thousands of dollars. So put a humidifier in your case, people, you know? Yeah, uh. of course. Uh, well, I guess we it's the time of, of the year where we're always returning to the question of the music goals for the new year. Um, anything specific on your mind, Hayes? I have had some specific goals this year. Um mm. And you're going to love this. This is so out of left field. But mm -hmm. you and I have been talking about our technique and our speed playing and things like this a lot mm -hmm. over the, the last couple of years, right? Yeah. Um, but this year, I've kind of... Because my wife really got into hard rock music, the music I used to listen to when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. um, I've taken this technical exploration back to kind of my roots and I'm starting to explore more like electric music okay. again this year. So my goal this year is to release one rock song a month. Wow. I've already got, I've already got tracks for like four of them right now, but I'm hoping to have an, a rock album, a Hayes Griffin rock album by the end of the year. And you're hearing it here first people. I'm setting it out on the mandolin secrets wow. podcast. So wow. that there's a Hayes Griffin rock album. Um, but that you saw the, the... Yeah, thanks, man. I'm really excited yeah. about it. And it kind of makes sense, right, about the techniques that we've been talking about for right hand <laughs> and left hand accuracy. They all come from these metal guys, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've always seen you as a shredder, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I will say this. Uh, I've been listening to a lot to your, uh, you know what I want to say, you're the, the most famous Swedish musician, that, at least that I knew of mm -hmm. um, before meeting you, Ingvi Malmsteen has been yeah. in my eardrums quite frequently here lately wow. and has provided a lot of inspiration. This is very interesting. And how do you get 
laying down the tracks and writing the tunes? Are you are you playing like like Invis stuff or what are you? What is yeah. that? So what is right now tunes? I'm yeah I'm trying to write tunes in the style of my favorite metal and hard rock musicians. So I've wow. got a, a like a bit of a neoclassical flavored yeah. piece that I think will be my Ingvi in inspired wow. kind of piece and then <laughs> I've got a, a couple like blues rock things that are more mm. like uh um we've been listening to Dio a lot. I don't know if you've ever heard of Ronnie know, James I've Dio. Heard. Yeah. 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 Um so yeah, just kind of like it, it, in a way, Magnus, it's like me I feel like since I got back to this music, I realized for the last like maybe 15, 20 years that there was like a part of my musical identity that I had cut off and not really. I was really... about to say it's, it's uh, cause first, uh, my first reaction, it's like you break a new ground, but then my second thought was, no, it's like, it sounds like he's completing the circle. <laughs> yeah. I think that's kind of what it is. You know, I, yeah. I, uh, I feel that way that it's some mm. kind of return, you know, um, Wow, I, I just now recalling like one year ago when I was visiting you in your basement, you were playing along some like Eric Johnson stuff. You even <laughs> played it back on your electric mandolin. Yes. And it, it sounded so cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that's that's where my head is these days. So I'm going to try and... I think I owe it to myself to follow that thread this year. So that's my goal for the year is wow. to get back in touch with the rock stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. And I mean, high ambitions with like, even like releasing it. Well, yeah. I, 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 well, oh man, maybe we will spend the, 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 entire call only talking about this now but if that's the case it's worth it so writing your own tunes but how how about like laying the tracks are you bringing a, a band together or so right now my my initial plan was to kind of just like uh do it uh it, like diy style you know yeah. what i mean just kind of like because there are, are some really good drum sample libraries out there that you can construct really good like nice sounding yeah. um, rock and metal uh, mm. samples from so my plan i've been tracking bass and guitars myself so mm. i've got all that covered um yeah and, and i've got drum tracks laid underneath of it but my plan i've re actually reconnected with the drummer that i used to be in hard rock bands with when i was a teenager oh. um he moved uh 15 minutes from me so i'm I'm going to see if he's interested in putting some some human drums on it instead of, <laughs> you know, having the robot play drums for me the whole time. Yeah, but I think you can, as you said, you can get pretty far with that also. And That's, it's almost especially from... if, I mean, I'm seeing this, like I'm hearing also now that this is maybe a way for you to challenge yourself challenge your playing your writing skills and all that and so there will be a lot of focus on those parts and maybe uh, maybe also it's maybe not because sound wise you can't get anything better than those pre-recorded tracks sort of i mean the, the sound of those are incredible yes and it, they, they it, and it so will much be time, right even like you it will be it will be like the the limiting borders the framework for your own creativity using these sample tracks and yeah so, uh, so, i like uh, that it's like the stravinsky <laughs> method right like the you find freedom in the restrictions mm -hmm. you know like the yeah well, I, like in all creativity i guess it's it's but but also of course, it's cool to connect with your real drummer and all that. Wow, this is this is huge, Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, maybe I record a track and then send it to you, and you put a harmony on it or something like that. You know, I know you've got the Green Goblin over there. Yes, so. <laughs> oh yes. The, so that's my next question. How how do you fit in the mandolin into your metal? <clears throat> Very easily. Um, mm -hmm. So one of my favorite bands from 
back in that kind of 80s hard rock period. That's like really where I'm focusing, you know, is like mm. the early to mid 80s. Um, I love Iron Maiden so much. Mm. Iron Maiden was a, a great group that um, had twin guitar. Like they, to me, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, my God, they're both guitars are playing lead. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that was mind blowing because usually there's like a rhythm guy and then a lead guy. Yeah. Right? But but they had twin harmonies and stuff. Yeah, so they're, they're a huge I'm, over here also. I know all this. I've, run to I the figured, hills, right? Like, well, yeah, yeah. I didn't know because I know you're the acoustic mandolin guy, and I'm yeah. like, I know metal is big in Sweden, but I don't know yeah. if Magnus is in the metal. <laughs> yeah. No, but but I'm, I didn't miss. Her. Well, I I remember my brother getting Fear of the Dark, that one of their like mid '90s album, maybe. Uh, oh so, yeah. But, but when I discovered that, then we also, of course, listened to. My my two friends, their older brothers, they were Iron Maiden fans and had the entire catalog and uh, the jeans number jackets. Of the beast. With yes, number exactly. Of the with beast. all that, with yeah. Eddie on it, right? Like yeah. their character, the like yeah. you know, skeleton looking guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I th the funny thing is, mm -hmm. I was working out a few weeks ago. The Trooper, you know, like one of their most famous tracks, and mm -hmm. uh, the the top guitar lines lay mm -hmm. so well on the electric mandolin you're kind oh. of most of the top guitar lines that i've worked out are like in the first five to seven frets of like the d or excuse me the g and the the a string on the mandolin so like mm. right in like the good playable territory mm. of the mm. instrument cool <laughs> <laughs> ah this is this is really nice oh man yeah i didn't expect that to be quite the conversation starter but <laughs> well yeah but it's it's interesting yeah man because... what, what about you what, what have you been working on Oof. well i s simply put i don't have like big new year goals this year not more than like keeping my really good habits yeah. of uh, like a, my daily routine and just uh, i guess the main purpose is still to work on my the drive in my playing and and primarily on in bluegrass music yeah but it's um i i also realized that i don't have to make really really big goals right now since i'm the environment are taking care of my improvement at the moment uh, just the fact we have started like regular bluegrass jams here so i'm i have um, perfect reason to broaden up the the repertoire and work on this on the skills and then the fact that i'm already like booked for the bluegrass festivals here in sweden this summer so a huge motivator just to to keep keep doing what i'm what i'm doing yeah you've um, got that goal right that's that's fun yeah man. i mean that that is like so, um, yeah, and it's uh, beside that. I mean, it's I have some like plans for mandolin secret stuff. Uh, first, we're gonna I'm gonna do the six week program fretboard success already in Eight. February, and then I'm also hoping to to complete this octave mandolin section that I've been like. It's been on the, how to say, in the creation for a long time. And, well, it, it's going to take form here in, in the spring. That's so and, cool. Um, yeah. And also connected to the festival booking this summer. I mean, because you are going to come here <laughs> in August. Yeah. And I'm, because I'm, you and me have been talking about this, the bluegrass mandolin uh, survival kit or survival yes. guide or how we will so i'm thinking maybe it's a perfect opportunity to record that that also while you're here and also why we have things really fresh for our teaching um so well a lot of plans of course a lot of uh, nice thing coming up but um it's sort of like now the environment and the circumstances are are just creating opportunities almost yeah it's like it's all coming together right like mm. it all feeding itself i love yeah. to hear that man 
So yeah, it's, it's cool when the when the New Year's goal can be maintain the course, yeah. <laughs> right? You know, it's yeah. not like you have to come up with something new. It's like, you know, I've I've landed on a good groove, and the goal this year is to not get out of this, right? To, that, that that's exactly a good way of framing how I, how I'm feeling about it, and uh, so, yeah, yeah, um, man. Well. It's been cool to see Mandolin Secrets like to stick with you over these last couple of years and see it grow. And it was cool to hear you say the octave mandolin kind of section coming into the website because I know that's something that people have been requesting ever since I've been involved with the uh, the show. Yes, you know? yeah, and I see also a lot of the players actually picking up the octave mandolin uh, because of uh, studying with me and being inspired by me. So. It's it's gonna. I actually recorded this morning, the octa mandolin. So good. Got some got some more Nordic folk stuff coming here. That's great, man. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that's that's what the people want. Give it to them, Magnus. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's. Well, we don't. Let's uh, see what the community says about another question, because we kind of covered the goals here for the new year. Yeah. But talking about um, the other questions we had in mind, what... Um, yeah, because we've got, what are your tips for learning music by ear, and do you play yeah. other mandolin family instruments? I almost touched upon that already, talking about your... And your electric mandolin playing and my octa mandolin playing, but um, what were the people in the community says? Do they play other mandolin family instruments? Yeah, it was kind of interesting to see um, which ones popped up there. There was more uh, mandola mm -hmm. <laughs> than I thought there would be. You know, that's a kind of interesting. Yeah. But yeah, tons of octave mandolin and mandola. Uh, the, Wendy says she she has a bullback bazooki tuned C F A D, mm. uh, you know yeah. there there are all sorts of interesting things yeah. related to the like the bazooki octave yes. mandolin world that way right like the tunings are different the strings you put on are different but generally I think a lot of people played like a sittern or octave mandolin mm. type instrument um, yeah, yeah we, I think there's yeah. there's I mean in the terminology here. Even like mandola, you saying people are a, a, so in my part of the world, people are often referring to the mandola, to the octa mandolin, yes. as we are using. So, but of course, the true mandola would be the shorter scale with the C in the bottom, similar to the viola in the violin family. But there is some those the names of those instruments just well blends, I guess. Yeah. Anyway. No, and bouzouki you're mentioning, the Irish bouzouki, being almost the same as the octa mandolin, slightly different tune. I mean, but maybe, yeah, and sometimes people differentiate the bouzouki as the, like, the small string plus the wound string together, you know what I mean, mm. on the, the lower courses. Like, I've heard mm. all these definitions that I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess, yeah. So I play, I label my instrument an octa mandolin. I'm using this, this, uh, this octave string thing that you're, yes. I'm using that. But, and if I tune it GDAD, I would call it maybe an Irish bouzouki. So the tuning uh, here giving me a little idea of, but I'm not, I don't know really. Um, no, that's it's fun to see how that works, though, right? Mm, um, I, yeah. I never knew about this uh, kind of terminology discrepancy until I started playing electric mandolin, five string electric mandolin, mm -hmm. and posting YouTube videos because tons of people wanted to hop in the comments and correct me and tell me that it wasn't a five string mandolin, that it was oh. a five string mandola <laughs> with a high E. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Isn't that funny? So everybody's got their own kind of way uh -huh. of negotiating how this how this works. Yeah. Hmm. A five string mandola with an E on top of it. <laughs> I can I can accept that, but I can also accept it's a, it's a five string mandolin with a C 
in the bottom. It's a yeah. Is the is the glass half empty or half full? You know. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>... yeah. <laughs> mm. Tiny Moore called it an electric mandolin. I'm yeah. calling it electric mandolin, dude. That's that's as much a uh, you know kind of backup as I need. <laughs> mm. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, cool. just to to tie this one off, there were f- mm. uh, over 42 people responded in the Facebook group that they played um, mm. instruments uh, mm. in the in the mandolin family that were not the mandolin, which I, mm. you know, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. And I think for everyone playing the mandolin, there's an opportunity to try another instrument because uh, the way that I like to frame it, it's also uh, like broaden your musicality and, 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 and the way that you can interact with other musicians. Just comparing now the octa mandolin and the mandolin, it will like, well, put you more in the in the lower register as an accompaniment player, maybe doing the octave rather to the mandolin. So it, it's 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 a well richer toolbox. I, I like to say, yeah, so and for very little effort, if for you've very put little some time effort. into the the mm-hmm. mandolin, right? Mm. Um, if I have to get. I, I always think about this, right? When I'm on stage and I have to play mandolin and guitar on the same gig, sometimes it can mm. be really difficult in that first moment switching mm. between one of them because I have to like kind of yeah. shift my brain to the new tuning and stuff like that. But if you're picking yeah. up an octave mandolin from a mandolin, it's not that yeah, much. Yeah, it's of almost a... seamlessly. And and talking about this, also, I I, I attended a concert here in December, and uh, the lady on stage played a. Uh, mandolin bass so it was like big uh, really big mandolin with four strings like a, a stand-up bass well yeah yeah stand-up bass yeah what was it a, a with gibson frets. one with fret yeah it was a le- maybe it was a gibson i'm not sure but I, no i actually think it was a levin yeah but it might have been a gibson i'm not sure Actually, I, I I was wasn't that, but it was it, and it's so it's a bass with frets on it. That's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. like an upright bass with upright frets on it, bass. You know? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I've heard that those are pretty. Uh, I've never played a mandolin bass, but I've heard that they're pretty crazy to kind of wield. They have an interesting sound to them. Did is was mm-hmm. that your experience listening to her, or it did it sound an, like a bass? Well, no, it that didn't really sound like a bass, and it was also amplified. So, ah. but it it's it looked cool. <laughs> I must say, it looked cool, <laughs> <laughs> especially as yeah. a mandolin player watching in the audience, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, and actually, where we started, so. A few tips for learning music by ear. Yeah, um, that's a that was a that one spurred a lot of discussion in the community, and it was kind mm. of cool to see people's different tips. A lot of variations on um, my favorite phrase that you know one of my professors told me in college: "If you can sing it, you can play it." You know, so mm. I think a lot of people were active, uh, actively trying to show you that if you just sing something and try and find it on your instrument, then that's a mm. really good way to train your yeah. ear and become closer with the instrument. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Sam uh, Bird in the in the community here had a really uh, cool kind of almost method in, mm-hmm. in terms of learning to hear intervals, like mm-hmm. so distances between two melody notes, and mm-hmm. then learning... Uh, like expanding upon that to learn chords like triads so being able Mm -hmm. to sing triads and find them on your instrument and stuff like that yeah i thought that was really neat what what do you think magnus yeah well i i remember me answering the questions and for very very like starting from the very basic but my my advice is if you want to learn to play something by air uh Listen to if you want to learn a tune, for example, and you have a recording of it. Listen to it as many times as you possibly can. Uh, I mean, I like I like putting music for, for 
yeah, to my nowadays it's my iPhone. Yes. And I just I'm just listening to this track while I'm making the dishes, while I'm maybe taking a walk. So like and so it 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 really ties into this if you can sing it but but to to internalize it, it it will make it a lot easier to then learn it by ear if you can uh so and of course also i get restless and i well now i, I just want to learn this tune and i try to sit down and, and <laughs> play it but if i'm if i skipped i can't even tell you how m- how much you must listen to it if it's 10 if it's 50 or 100 times i don't i don't i don't have a number for it depending on tune but the more you've done it the easier it will be so that's my just yes, the general tips that i throw it out there yeah i i couldn't agree with you more on that one i've i've it took me a while to figure out that there's actually a really there's value in taking that slow approach at first, instead of immediately grabbing the mandolin, listen to the tune that you want to play. If you've Mm. like, say, say you're in mandolin secrets, right? Like if you Mm. have one of our lessons that you're trying to learn a tune Mm. from download the play along first and just, just listen to it, right? Listen to it over and over for a couple of days. I I would say, don't even touch the mandolin for a couple of days. Right. Um, no, that's, that, that is, so valuable if you can do it yeah. and and even i i mean i did see also people are like giving tips to each other about different apps they are using for yes improving it and i have a hack for this thing that i'm talking about so for example me when i'm i'm transcribing solos something i've been doing a lot the last year yeah i like like uh getting my my track of this tune into an like an audio kind of software mm-hmm. then i'm 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 actually cutting out the solo playing it one time through and, and a second time through third time through then i'm i'm playing the entire song and then it's ending it again with three times the solo so every time i listen to the track i get the solo seven times i like that yeah and it's uh, so that's something is i do well and you you can see the difference listening to the track once and then you're going to listen to the whole track again just to get that part that you actually are after um, yep. So as a study method, I think it's cool. But of course, your friends and family will be crazy if you're playing back your your pre- those two. <laughs> oh man! It, yeah, that's a the parts that say... they want to skip. You are repeating over and over. Yeah. And over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, I have firsthand experience with this. <laughs> In my own house. <laughs> this is why, if I'm learning a new tune, usually the headphones go on. You know what I mean? Mm. And then uh, maybe the electric guitar comes out so she can't hear it or something like mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, but. Um, well. I don't have. have I think that that that's the tip that I I gave in the group, and I'm happy with that right now. I think that's that's a great general tip that can honestly steer people toward a, a really great outcome. And I think part of it, my my final thought on the ear training thing is just do something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take mm-hmm. Magnus's advice and just do something. I think a lot of people get paralyzed by the fact that ear training seems hard and they don't know what to do, sing mm-hmm. something, try and find it on your instrument. That's as simple as it needs to like yeah. get, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I think I could even do it more. All those all those melodies that we carry in our head, if it's songs that we heard when we were kids, uh, or Christmas Christmas is a great opportunity to to get to practice this thing. Because all the I Christmas so. songs we have, try to hunt and peck. Is that a way to say it? Hunt yes. Hunt and peck. How, where is the notes on the mandolin or the instrument? And 
I think it's funny that you mentioned Christmas tunes because I just had this discussion with a student a week ago or a couple weeks ago about learning Christmas tunes and how it can be a good ear training exercise. Uh, because often, I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. if I'm out at the holidays, by the time Christmas rolls around, I am really sick of hearing Frosty the Snowman mm -hmm. and Jingle Bells. But mm. there's this thing that I always say, like, because uh, the tune, it just gets stuck in my head. You know what I mean? Mm. These tunes just stay in there forever. So I always tell my students that the only way to release the demon inside <laughs> your head is to play it on your instrument, right? If yeah. it, it, it works for me. If, if that song mm. is stuck in my head and I work mm. it out on the instrument, it just kind of like... Mm vanquishes the enemy <laughs> wow i like it method to get the demons yeah get those musical demons out of your mind Haze and the ghostbusters yeah <laughs> uh, that's yeah. funny yeah yes i think that this is a good start of the new year and for our first episode of 2024 it's um and we are, we're, we, me and Hayes are talking about it, the podcast, we're kind of a little bit loose about it, and we are accepting that we'll release a podcast episode every now and then, but our aim is at least once a month. We'll see how it goes, but uh, I hope it's bringing some value to you, the listener. Really appreciate you, and uh, yeah. I'm uh, wishing us, everyone, a good year to come, and also, of course, a happy new year. Yes. Happy New Year, everyone. Yes. Any last words you want to add, Hayes, before wrapping it up? No, I think uh, that's about it, but we'll be back at some point, like you said. If you want to keep up with us, head to mandolinsecrets.com forward slash podcast, and you can see all the other episodes and more info about us. But, but that's all I've got, buddy. All right, my friends. Thank you so much. And until next time, always remember, be a music maker. <laughs>